right, we're in it. This is binder number eight on my channel. And remember, you can always find these cards for sale on my store on eBay. My Man Justin is the username. The store is called My Man Justin's Collectible Emporium. And you can find me really easily just by searching up eBay username My Man Justin. So uh, as we first get into it, page one has some of the more valuable cards. I've pointed out this card before. This is a really nice card. Um, it is one of my favorite Mega Charizard artworks. The other, the other uh, Mega Charizard artworks are a little underwhelming, I thought. They don't kind of showcase the whole body of Charizard. They're usually up close of his face, like the Flashfire Charizard. This one, you get the whole body of Charizard. He looks really cool. You can see the, the, the small differences with the Mega Charizard, with the extra horns he has on top, as well as the um, uh, spikes on his tail and the, the uh, bigger wings. So he looks really good. It's a high quality made card. That was one of the good things about the cards in XY Evolutions is that the printing quality was pretty high. They were centered well and they are good cards to send in to get graded. I've sent in two so far. Both were PSA 10 and um, it's um, because they are uh, easily more easily PSA 10 there is more of them which makes the cost of the PSA 10 variations rarely uh, fairly cheap. They're around 50 or $60 in PSA 10 form, which is cool though because you can have a Charizard card in PSA 10 in your collection for a reasonable price. Here is uh, Sylveon, the nice full art. It's a really nice, vibrant, bright, magenta, pink color in the background that really makes the artwork pop. Eevee, uh, the Sylveon's in a really kind of cute uh, pose. It's just a Nice job they did with the artwork on that one. Also here is the Hyper Rare Rainbow Art Rainbow Rare version. This card is a fairly valuable card right now. Uh, on eBay, people are asking anywhere from $25 to $40. It'll probably get somewhere in the middle of that, maybe around $30. So a fairly expensive card for newer for, for a card in a newer set. The, these kind of newer cards don't usually uh, fetch those high of prices. They just haven't been around long enough to kind of get that kind of rarity and desire. And some of the, like these packs are still in circulation. This is another one of those rarities of a newer card that is going to be anywhere from $30 to $45. This is the Hyper Rare Mewtwo and Shining Legends. Really nice card. It's a Mewtwo. Very popular Pokemon. And this was a really cool set. It's also the same set as this secret rare Mewtwo, I'll get into that. So yeah, this is a card to look out for. Um, already fairly expensive. And there is the full art version of it as well. This is a Primal Groudon. Another card, it's around that 18, 19, 20 dollar range. The, the XY set I think really did a good job when they unveiled these full art cards. I'm not, I'm not a super big fan of the Japanese characters in front of the Pokemon, but the cards are just really loud. There's there's a lot of color to them. They're vibrant. They're high quality. So uh, and they're, the, there's a really nice hard texture. So it's a really sturdy card. So these these uh, cards in this set have actually maintained their value. Their value really steadily over time which is a good thing and they are still commonly purchased so you can get cards like these invest in cards like these if you can get them at a good price and like a lot uh, they will sell uh, very steadily next we have this test tube Mewtwo this is a really cool card very unique artwork unlike any other artwork in the set it's a secret rare they also made the holograph pattern on Mewtwo itself, like the Shining cards in the past, which is a nice differentiation for the card. Um, it's got a nice theme to it. It's a very unique artwork. This is actually a card that I decided because I, I had a one that I thought might grade 10, so I sent in recently, and I'll get that back in a few months. And I decided to do that with this card because since the artwork is so unique and there's a lot of story in this, you know, Mewtwo is a hybrid Pokemon that was created in a lab from the DNA of Mew. 
me and then became Mewtwo. So it's just got some story to it. It's got unique artwork, um, unique holo pattern, secret rare, Mewtwo. There's a lot of things that just make it a good card. And, and this is the kind of things that you should think about when purchasing and grading cards is just thinking forward about how it will uh, value in the future. And especially with cards that are newer like that, you, you do want to try to grade a card that you think are going to be PSA 10. This card is a little bit older. It's from the black and white set. It's from Next Destinies. It's a really nice Mewtwo artwork. I like the colors in the backgrounds. Usually, since Pokemon collecting is similar to art collecting, cards that have a nice aesthetic to it and nice colors are going to fetch a little bit of a higher price just for the aesthetic qualities. As you can see, it's, it's kind of like it's got a mystical kind of glow of those uh, the blues and the purples around it, and he's kind of it looks like in some kind of space dimension time warp in the background, you, you know, utilizing his psychic powers. So it's a nice card, it's nice and crisp. And uh, there's also a Mew in this set that really complements this card, similar type of artwork. So uh, this is going to be another around $20 card. Next page we got, so there's this set of Mega Mewtwo's. These are cards that have, um, I've had many of them in the past and they always tend to sell fairly quickly. There's still a lot of people that like this card. It's a little bit more rare of a card, but certainly an essential for any Mewtwo collector. And it shows how with the Mega Mewtwo, there's actually two different variations of the Mega Mewtwo evolution. As you can see, this one has like this elongated head or this one has this kind of extra stuff wrapping around his neck and back and both of them have like a different color it's almost like a male and female type of uh, dynamic going on and, and again the uh, the XY series just did a really good job with the artwork on their full art cards they're high quality they're vibrant they're colorful and also speaking of the art cards we've seen this one before the shiny Gyarados with uh, this is a secret rare in the set and one of the themes in the secret rares in the XY series was there's uh, several other Pokemon in the artwork of the card the Manaphy the Greninja so this is actually another card I thought I had in a PSA 10 form I decided to grade I would consider it more of a, an aggressive type of grade but I figured there is a lot of Gyarados collectors, especially of the shiny variation, that would definitely appreciate to have this collection, PSA 10, in their collection. Here's another full art shiny red Gyarados. And of course we got some full art trainers. And just to note, there are collectors that like to collect these female full art trainers because you know they're they're pretty they're they're, they're uh, nice artwork very vibrant glamorous and I've noticed already some people have gotten these graded because I assume there's people that that want a full collection of all the female um, full art cards so this one's a little more expensive than say that uh, Faba right here. This is just going to be a standard um, five dollar card. Same with the Looker, five or six dollars. The Acerola being another full art female, um, it's a little more, six, seven, or eight dollars. Kiawe is worth a little more than the average one, around eight, because it actually had some playability value. It was especially um, important in the Burning Shadows set with players that wanted to use the Charizard because he used his attack you had to use four fire energies and this card allowed you to pull four fire energies out of your deck uh, so very important card to play the Burning Shadows Charizard Lily this one this is gonna be around a 15 to 20 dollar card Lily has been notoriously higher priced there is another Lily in um, another set that's worth about $60 raw. The artwork is a little more, uh, a little nicer. It's just a little more 
dynamic and flashy and nice. Here we have the Heart Gold and Soul Silver Legend cards. So this was something, this was the, I think one of the things that really set the Heart Gold Soul Silver deck uh, set apart. It's a totally unique artwork. I think it looks great. Um, it's kind of this uh, different style of artwork for Ho-Oh. It's not, you, you won't really see this kind of artwork. It's almost like a painting look uh, in any other set. So it's totally unique to this set. The fact that they, they did this new thing with two cards making one was also completely new to this set. And it looks totally great. And uh, as you can see here, they did the same thing with Lugia. And this is also just totally awesome artwork. He's like diving into the water. Super detailed. A lot of effort, a lot of time, a lot of detail into the artwork. And it's something that really made Heart Gold Soul Silver nice, uh, especially because I thought the Prime cards, which are essentially the equivalent of like an EX card in the later sets, I just thought they were a little underwhelming because all of the Prime cards are just an up close of the Pokemon's face. So <clears throat> it's. It was just, um, it just didn't seem like a, a ton of effort and thought was gone into it. Um, with the other, the Undaunted Legend cards, as you can see, this is just a top half. They started introducing two Pokemon. So we have Kyogre and Groudon. Groudon would have been on the lower portion of this card. But I like the, the Heart Gold Soul Silver just having one. Uh, There's some just first edition Team Rocket set cards, as you can see. Here's a. Charizard, it's gonna be a card that's usually worth a solid five dollars as a Charizard. Here, a uh, Magic Heart from looks like a Fire Red, Leaf Green. Something cool about this set was that they did something new where all the cards were released in a holograph form, which looks really nice in a complete set to just have each card in your binder nice out n nice and shining and also the holographic pattern in these set was unique too because the hologram pattern included all of the energy symbols which looks really nice they also did this with the dx team rocket return set as well in some of the reverse halls as you can see here there's some energy symbols as you can see there so and i've said a lot about ex team rocket returns and i've done a video on it i had like a uh, kind of a near complete lot and showed a lot of the cards especially in the reverse hollow which looks awesome very popular popular right now the ex sets and the reverse hollow cards here's a card i would say would be a potential aggressive psa grade because it has as you can see it's got the toys r us stamp it was given out of toys r us and now that toys r us is no longer uh, around it's kind of got some historical value you were not going to see any more Toys R Us promo cards and there is a few other Toys R Us promo cards there's an Alolan Vulpix this Magikarp and uh, it would just look nice to have a whole set of PSA 10 or PSA 9 Toys R Us promo cards so it's just something to think of when you're thinking of, of creative ways to invest and just be kind of first to market to um, appeal to that collector that's going to have some kind of affinity to, to Toys R Us. A lot of uh, collectors started buying packs when they were younger at Toys R Us. Where it's where we probably bought their Nintendo 64 if you were around at that time, which was a huge deal. Here, I'm going to show you. These are, these are black and white promo evolutions. These are from the Sylveon collection. So what they did, it was a nine card set and it showcased all of the evolutions so far up into the release. This doesn't include all of them. There's also a Leafeon, an Umbreon, an Espeon, and a Sylveon. But uh, the, the background holograph patterns in these is really nice. It includes these kind of abstract shapes that represent the type of the, the evolution. And as you can see with the Eevee, it's got all the um, different colors 
of the energy types that EV could evolve into with these, you know, abstract shapes. Here we have the Flareon representing the fire. There's the Vaporeon, the water, more nice patterns in the background, and the Jolteon, the yellow sharp triangles in the background so it's a it's a cool set um, this would be another type of card I would say could be um, a, an aggressive not even that aggressive actually uh, just a moderately aggressive investment for a PSA collection because to, to have a whole collection of these in a high grade would be really nice it, there's definitely going to be an evolution collector out there and these are a little older so it's also there's a good possibility that some evolution collectors don't even have these cards yet or might might not have have not even seen them yet especially for collectors that are still kind of just getting into it these are a little less known this whole, this entire set so there's some more ev cards on here you can see this card right here this is a really nice card this is from aquapolis or sorry this one is not from aquapolis this one is from one of the ex sets and it's a nice reverse hollow must have for any ev collector but this one right here is the aquapolis ev as you can see you know awesome artwork got this kind of feeling of Paris or something. Evie's running down the cobbled street into the metropolitan, kind of old school metropolitan area. And it's got a nice hollow pattern. Really nice looking card. Uh, this card is probably going to go for at least $25, given that the Aquapolis reverse hollows are already going to be anywhere from $8 to $12, but being an Evie card, especially in near mint to mint condition, it could easily fetch $25. Some more evolutions. Here's an EX Delta Species EV. I'm not too fond of this uh, artwork. I've actually shown this before. I just think EV just looks a little weird. I mean, it's not a normal look for EV. It just doesn't look as sharp. This next page, we've got some more reverse holo. EX cards. Here's a Slay King from EX Power Keepers. Um, a couple Ditto cards. And, and, and you can always tell uh, this from the Hard Gold Soul Series uh, era because it has this kind of faded yellow around the border. Same set as the Ho -Oh and, and the Luigi Legend. And these reverse hollows are um, getting to be a little more sought after. They're still going to only be around two, three, or four dollars. Here's a ditto turning into a Pikachu. A couple promos. Here, nice Pikachu cards. These are cards that are, you know, there's always going to be someone looking for, to complete a Pikachu collection. Evolutions, Sun and Moon promos, the Detective Pikachu Sun and Moon promo with a stamp. some XY Evolutions. I've taken some of these out because uh, they were all XY Evolutions reverse hollows and I'm just putting together a complete or near complete XY Evolutions reverse hollow set. This is one of those uh, Burger King promos I believe because uh, that was the hollow pattern they used on, on their cards, 12, 12 cards in the set. That could be a potential nice little set for someone to have. It's a really obscure set that was only released through the Burger King promotion. So here I've talked about before uh, what to do with cards like these. And that's always a question. Uh, usually, usually what I'll do is I'll try to gather up all the cards in like sets. Um, because, you know, when, you're, when, when you have cards like these, you know, it, it, if you're looking at lots and you see a lot of cards like this in them, um, it's you gotta remember that these cards usually sell for about 99 cents okay now a stamp alone costs 51 cents 
the hard case that you got to put the card in to secure it costs around five cents plus just the envelope itself and the tape you know plus eBay fees and PayPal fees you're gonna be in 65 70 cents already you're gonna make 30 cents on the card plus whatever you paid for it there's not gonna be much profit in the, in the cards like these so you really can't pay more than five cents a card so you gotta just factor that in and find ways uh, better ways to sell them rather than individually because at 51 cents to sh you know per stamp alone you got to find a way to get get a, a lot of them off at once to minimize your shipping costs and materials costs so as you can see here we have a, a lot more of these kind of cards so I'll just go through these I'll find cards and like sets I'll put them all together and make like a little reverse hollow set or I'll just sell it as a big lot but usually these cards are not worth now there's some cards, some cards like this, that are a little more popular, that may, might be worth two dollars, and I'll just take the time to list. But you know, just because what that does too is that generates um, attention to your shop or someone that just wants to pick up a quick two dollar card. At least you can get them into your shop checking out other cards too. So there is reasons to take the time to to um, list these uh, lower price cards like this Arcanine. I would list individually as well. Now also, as you can see here, there is uh, several cards missing, because what I did here is I noticed it was a near complete Pokemon uh, Detective Pikachu set. So I'll show it to you here. It's almost complete, there's just a few missing. The Bulbasaur, Morlul, Charmander, Arcanine, Psyduck, Magikarp, Detective Pikachu, Machamp, Jigglypuff, Snubble, Look at Tongue and Slay King. And it's cool, you know, they, they're all Pokemon that were in the movie in the same artwork style that they were in in the movie, that kind of realism look that uh, they used in the movie to kind of give you an idea of what Pokemon would look like if they were in the, if they were real in the real world. So that's just another way, rather than ship them all off individually, kind of put them into a meaningful set and, uh, have just one shipping cost and you can see there's a bunch of great Greninjas what that usually tells me is that this was a card that was used for play so when someone collects that many of them it usually means they had them for a, a deck now here this is a cool card this was part of the Munch Scream series and like I've said since Pokemon's like art collecting they really mix the two with these this is based on the famous painting, The Scream, and they released several of these cards that were also in the same position, in that Scream position. Here's the Eevee, there's also a Psyduck, and a few others, and they had to be ordered, uh, like a pre-ordered special from Japan to get them, and these are cards that are really valuable when graded. In PSA 10 grades, I've seen these sell for over $100. So it's definitely a card to consider um, for a nice investment for PSA if you think it's a, at least a 9, hopefully a 10. There's definitely a lot of people that appreciate the artwork in these. It's unique, there was a limited printing of them, and it's a really nice card. This card right here, I'll note how they were given out at GameStar, GameStop for the movie, and when these ori originally were listed, they were going for really expensive they were like eight nine dollars a card and uh, now they've gone down in price most people that wanted the card have purchased it but there's always uh, demand for Pikachu cards promotional Pikachu cards so um, I'm guessing it'll probably be around five dollars there's a nice Lowland Vulpix the whole card is holographic and Japanese Variation. Here's some more XY evolutions. A couple of those secret rares as you can see up here. A bunch of non hollows. These cards here, and it's important to note that these are actually the World Championship promo versions of the card. And on the back of the card, you can see World Championships 2009. They were given out at the, the event, and they always have a signature. 
because they were used. These are cards that were used in a champion's deck. So these cards will always have that signature, and they will be a non-hollow variation, and they're always going to be less valuable than the standard card in the set. So it's just important to know, like when you're scrolling through and you see a Dedenne, uh in on eBay and it's five dollars, it's probably not the set Dedenne, It's probably the World Championship promo, and Dedenne is a card that was used in the set. It's popular because it has the same ability as Tapu Lele and Shaman before it, uh, where you can play the Pokemon from your hand onto your bench and you can discard your hand and draw six cards. Actually, that's I think that's actually a little different than the Shaman. Maybe I'm wrong, but yeah, but but it's it's that ability that that made the card so popular. So the all, all these as well, Mewtwo and Mew. The alternate art promo for this card was really nice. I just recently sent one in to get graded because I thought the artwork was so unique and nice that there would be a demand for it. It was a somewhat aggressive PSA grade, being a newer card. All the rest of the cards here, you can see with the silver border, these are all World Championship promo cards, as well as these and these some energies so there it is as you can see this set there was a lot more cards that I'm gonna have to work with and find a way to sell a little more creatively rather than individually like a lot of my past collections that I've purchased but uh, I hope you saw some cards that you thought were nice um, and like I said if you, if you are interested in purchasing any of these they can be purchased from my shop I will be having another collection binder coming in this week, and I will do another video on that one. And until then, I'll see you and have a great week.